presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater, starring Van Johnson and Joanne Drew in Trouble Along the Way with Terry Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's romantic comedy, Trouble Along the Way, we have a gentleman with a problem. The gentleman has a small daughter who needs supervision. There's a small college that needs a football team. And a beautiful social worker. And, well, you listen and see how complicated a man's life can get. And as our stars of this delightful story from the Warner Brothers Studios, we have Van Johnson and Joanne Drew with Jerry Jack. <laughs> Suppose I'd passed the place a hundred times before I even knew what it was. The mossy old walls, the quaint sagging buildings, the ivy-covered tower. Well, finally, I asked the taxi driver. Why, that's a college, lady. St. Anthony's College. College? Yeah. There ain't another one like it in the world. There ain't no college nowhere as broken down as this college. Why, it, it must be the oldest college in New York City. Nah, it just looks that way. Oh, but it's beautiful. Those lovely iron gates and that wonderful tower with the clock. Yeah, uh, the, the clock's on all four sides, see? Oh, yes, I know. Only each side's got a different time. Oh, that's some clock, lady. You can't even learn a time of day. <laughs> Poor St. Anthony. Shabby, neglected, completely out of place in the city that surrounded it. The city, incidentally, was my boss. I worked for the Court of Domestic Relations, and quite often my job took me near St. Anthony. One day I even saw an automobile drive in. What we're trying to say, Father Burke, is that, uh, well, Brother Procurator and I have come here directly from a meeting of the province advisors. They're upset about the um, indebtedness of your little college. Over $170,000, Father. And you don't seem to be doing anything to decrease... Well, George, when I take a vow of poverty, I go all the way. It appears you've been going a little too far. You see, Father, St. Anthony's College is going to close its doors. Close? I'm sure you'll find it's all for the best, Father. But... But I can't leave St. Anthony's. Why, I, I, I've been here as a student, a, a professor, and then as father rector for for more than 50 years. Yeah, I'm sorry, Father, but the decision's been made. Unless you suddenly find $170,000. Meanwhile, you'll finish the term, of course, but try to keep expenses down. Well, goodbye, Father. And don't worry, Father. We're certainly not going to put you out the pasture. God bless you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, don't trip on that step going down. That board was loose when I was a student here. The place is nothing but a fire trap. If I had my way, we'd close it down immediately. Is that so? Well, we shall just see about that. We'll see about that indeed. <laughs> That evening, Father Burke gave a little talk to the student body, after which he went to his office, followed by his two assistants, Father Peterson and Father Malone. That was an excellent speech, Father Burke. Excellent. Thank you, Lennox. But you just told those boys this college will still be here when, they're, when their grandchildren are flunking out. We understood the college was ordered closed. Only if we fail to solve our financial problem. That's a mere matter of money. Oh, that old stuff again. I know exactly how I shall meet the situation, and as usual, I shall meet it single-handed. And just how do you intend to get $170,000? I found the answer in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy? Chapter 32, verse 15. Chapter 32? Well, is there a Bible in the house, or do you have to go to a hotel? I'll see you both in the morning. Hmm. Chapter... 32, verse 15. Hmm. The beloved grew fat and kicked. What did you say? 
The beloved grew fat and kicked. Now, what do you suppose Father Burke meant by that? To Father Burke, the meaning was entirely obvious. Football, what else? The next day, after visiting a couple of prominent coaches, Father Burke found himself in a rather steamy section of the east side. He was looking for a man named Steve Williams. Sure, I know where he is. Only, what do you want with him? Well, I have a position to offer him. Well, he's a little old for an altar boy, but you look harmless. Appearances can be very deceiving, but uh, thank you anyway. That's Steve chalking up his cue. He's got a sucker on the hook. Uh, thank you, little girl. Uh, Mr. Williams? Good morning. I hate to interrupt your game, but I... Oh, it's nothing, Father. Only 75 cents a ball. I'm Father Burke, St. Anthony's College. A little off your beat, aren't you? No, I don't think so. I'm looking for an experienced football coach. I understand you used to be one of the best. Who told you? You have friends. Friends who want to save my soul and get us out of this unwholesome atmosphere? Us? Who's my pop? Oh. <laughs> well, I... I have a school that is in financial difficulties. That's my only reason for coming to you. I'm afraid you're a little out of touch. I've been kicked out of the Big Ten, the Ivy League, and the Southern Conference. They wouldn't even let me coach at Alcatraz. <laughs> I know all about that. The offer still holds. Thanks. But I like it here. Very few alumni come back to tell me how to hold this cue. Do I detect a note of bitterness? You do indeed. Now, in case you don't know it, Father, football is now an American industry. The price of a good running back often surpasses the salary of a professor. And whenever some righteous committee unearths this well-known fact, it's always the coach who takes it on the chin. I just get tired of picking myself up. Uh, three ball in my side pocket, Steve. Go ahead. Six ball the hanger, Pop. Thanks, Junior. Hey, the wife got to play the whole family. Mr. Williams, you must not judge St. Anthony's by the standards of other schools. I'm willing to take a chance on you. Well, the trouble with us, Father, is that I'm a sensitive man and you're a gambler. No, thanks. Rack, boy, rack. Take my advice and stay out of sports. You'd be a babe in the woods. I'll rack the balls for you, honey. Pop! Pop, look, he's doing it with his arms. No rack, huh? Where did you ever learn how to do that? Hey, the father's a ringer. <laughs> I also play a very good game of Kelly Pool, Mr. Williams, if you should change your mind. You're quite a guy. Yeah. Aren't I? <laughs> well, that's how Father Burt met Steve Williams. Now, how do I figure in all of this? Well, my first meeting with Steve Williams occurred early the following day, when I, too, came searching for him. But mine was a much different sort of error. Thanks to you, Pop. Just brush her off and eat your breakfast. Thanks, Junior. Well? I'm out of Singleton from the Children's Division of the Court of Domestic Relations. I've been assigned to investigate you and your child with regard to her environment and educational training. Excuse me. Uh, the deadline for school is in exactly ten and one quarter minutes. Now finish your breakfast inside and get going. Talk loud, Pop, so I can hear as for you, miss, please don't use the word child with such chilling precision. Her name is Carol. You seem very particular about everything except an untidy room and dirty dishes. Well, the butler was late today. You know, I'm beginning to wonder whether I'll get a fair shake in this investigation. I'm completely impartial. But I'm almost certain my report will have to be unfavorable. Before you get to know me? I interviewed the child's teachers and neighbors before coming here. My neighbors knock me? Oh, quite the contrary. But they're scarcely the sort of people I would choose for character references if I were you. Well? Well, the court has received the complaint that your child has been neglected. You mind telling me who filed the complaint? I believe it was your former wife. Why is she so interested all of a sudden? There's no reward. You pipe down. <laughs> we don't talk about my mother around here. She's been an all. Mrs. McCormick is worried that you're not getting the proper care. 
And I must say, it appears that she has some grounds. Honest, officer, I'm the nicest father a kid ever had. Show the lady how nicely the welts are healing where I beat you. And you know, those new teeth you bought me are just as good as the old ones, see? And we only hold up gas stations once a week, and in the daytime. It isn't as if I kept the kid up after hours. If you don't mind, Mr. Williams, we'll continue this discussion without the presence of the child. Go get your books. Steve, do I have to? I'll holler if I need help. You should have hollered before you got married. <laughs> now, may I have your occupation, please? Me? Oh, I'm, I'm a tycoon. Huh? Well, as I understand it, a tycoon is a man who has far-flung financial operations. Now, during football season, I get out a little card which gives my estimates of the worth of the various college teams. If your estimate is better than mine, I pay as high as five to one. And during baseball season, I do the same thing. And you can get action on the prize fights, hockey, and the nine ball in the corner pocket. I'm a tycoon. If there were any real attachment between you and your child... I would think you'd make every effort to convince the court that you're a fit parent. You're way off base. Miss Singleton, Carol and I are okay. It's you who needs help. Really? You know all about me, hmm? Uh, let me guess. Four years at finishing school, one year at the new school for social research... No love life, because you're afraid of it. You're also Mr. very... Mr. Williams, when I first walked in here, my sympathies were not entirely with that poor child's mother. But now I'm going to do everything I can to take Carol away from these awful surroundings and your degrading influence. You've got nice legs, too. All clear, Pop? Yeah. Why don't we go to a ball game? When did you burn down the school? Okay. But I'm only doing this for you. Thanks, pal. Here, have a good lunch. Be seeing you, Pop. I considered it my duty to check on Mr. Williams' activities for the balance of the day. Oh, what an impossible man. In any event, at about one o'clock, he entered a third-rate saloon on Second Avenue. Hello, Steve. Oh, Hello, Ann. I've been waiting for you. The bartender said you're here every day. That's right. One of my branch offices. You looked a little startled. I guess five years is a long time. Not long enough. Aren't you going to ask a former wife to take a seat? Go ahead. You've taken everything else. Well, I... I came by to talk about visiting privileges. Look, I've told your lawyer a dozen times I wouldn't let you see Carol for five minutes. But you don't understand. I want you to visit. One thing I always liked about you, Anne, no, no razzle-dazzle, always straight to the middle. What about your latest husband? Oh, Harold can still raise me to the heights with his checkbook. Now, look, there's no reason for a legal mess about the kid. All you have to do is be nice to him. Go home. It's very cold at home. Oh, you'll build a fire under someone, but not me. Don't you walk out on me, Steve. Come back here. All right, I'll get that kid away from you if it takes every lawyer in New York. You just watch. I can't say whether Mr. Williams was aware that I was following him or not. All I know is that he got away from me. And just to make matters worse, when I returned to their flat late that afternoon, Mr. Williams and his daughter had disappeared. That's about it, Father Burke. Carol here and I, well, we talked it over and decided to give it a whirl. Uh, we're very grateful to have you with us, Mr. Williams. I rather imagine you look upon St. Anthony as, as a last desperate resort. The bottom of the ivy-colored barrel, Father. But if you're willing to take a chance, so am I. Well, you're our last resort, too. You have six months in which to help us save our little school. I trust you'll do it with honor and integrity. What to sorry, Father? I believe that by skimping a little on our budget, we might afford, say, say $3,000 a year. Who'll buy a whistle? You keep out of this. It's a deal, Father. 
Your daughter will be gratified to learn that we supply room and board free of charge. Such is the case. Well, uh, let's just get it down on paper, huh? Uh, that's her religion, Father. I shall draw up a contract. I presume, little girl, you are also a notary public. <laughs> what a character. And so Steve Williams became a football coach St. Anthony's College. At the time, of course, I knew nothing of this. I was still looking for him. While he, as I later discovered, was looking for a football team. You really have a football team here, kid? Oh, sure, Mr. Williams. You bet I do. You go to the games? If I have to, sir. I'm the captain. Captain, huh? What do you weigh? 129, sir. Without my glasses. Now, I'll show you our playing field, Mr. Williams. It, it's right off this door. There you are. Quite adequate, I believe. Father Malone, this is the field? Dandy little layout, eh? Well, when do you pick the strawberries? Uh, this way, boys. Everyone over here, please. What system do you use, Father? Uh, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. However, usually the others do it to us first. Uh, fellas, I want you to meet your new coach. This is Steve Williams, boys. He's coached at some of the country's leading universities. For short intervals. And we're very happy to have him at St. Anthony. Anybody here know how to kick a football? Oh, I do the kicking, coach. Well, get out there and show me. And you backs receive. The linemen can practice blocking. All right, now get out there. How'd you do last season, Father? Oh, rather well. We showed up for every game. Just raw courage, huh? Oh, what are you waiting for? You have our ball, sir. It's the only one we have. Oh, here. And don't bruise it. This is it, Pop. This is where we're going to live. Yeah, this is it, honey. Up here at the top of the chapel tower. Father Peterson said we have a very fine view. Oh, brother, those stairs. I wonder who lived here last. The hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> How was school today? Oh, fine. How was football today? Just keep in training, kid. I'm going to need you at left guard. Bunch of bums, huh? Well, at least they're willing bums. Pop, I'm sorry I got the end of it. Oh, go to bed. Why don't we blow? Because the court's going to be looking for us, and when they find us, I want a better address than the pool room. Don't it give you the creep? Sleeping in a chapel after taking the three grand? Now, look. This is a musical comedy college, and nobody can save it except Rogers and Hammerstein. I couldn't help him if I wanted to, and i go to bed. Steve? Yeah? Anne couldn't really take me away from you, could she? Now, look. Why don't you quit trying to carry the world around on your shoulders? You're only 11 years old. Wait till you're 12. And stop worrying about the school and the church and taking their money. Not going to spoil my sleep. I'm so tired. Pop! Pop, what's that? Chapel bells. It seems we're right under them. Guess that was 10 o'clock, huh? Yeah, and I go to sleep. We got a solid 59 minutes to repent him. Well, I finally ran down Mr. Williams about a month later. He was out on the football field. I waited until they were through practicing. So it's you. Well, welcome to St. Anthony's, officer. Well, I must say your change of address is quite an improvement, but you neglected to notify the court. Strictly an oversight. Apparently, my little visit had some effect on you. You'd be surprised what effect it had. I'm going to find it hard to resist an officer from now on. Now, if you would just take a sensible viewpoint regarding Mrs. McCormick's visitation rights. Not a chance. Mr. Williams, why are you so stubborn about Carol's mother? Stubborn guy, I guess. Comes natural. I didn't mean to pry. I just hoped for more information so I'd have a better understanding of the situation. 
Well, you leave me no choice but to report in favor of Mrs. McCormick's complaint. I understand. No hard feelings? None. Goodbye. I'll try to... Well? May I ask what this is? That is a whiskey bottle. I keep it there on the bench. How can you possibly set this kind of an example in front of those boys? You have a very wicked and suspicious nature, Miss Singleton. That whiskey bottle is filled with liniment. Oh. I shall light a candle for you. (laughs) Steve? Oh, hello, Father Malone. I was eavesdropping, Steve. I'm sorry. I should have left when she started to talk to you. Oh, it's okay. Forget it. I just want you to know, Steve, I'm I'm sure you wouldn't have kept Carol unless you were sure she was better off with you. Carol's mother is just no good, Father. I may not be much better myself, but I just can't let her take that kid. Let me speak to Father Burke. I'm sure if he knew about... Nothing nothing doing. Whatever you've heard this afternoon is strictly between us. I want your word on that. Very well, Steve. If that's what you want. Things will work out one way or another. They always do. Morning, Father Burke. Ten o'clock. Aren't you a little late for school, Carol? Oh, well, uh, yes. Uh, that's the way I look at it, too. Uh, so I figured I'd go up to Yankee Stadium. Oh, and what are they teaching up there? Yanks versus Cleveland. It's a crucial. Carol. Carol, I, I want to talk to you. The truant officer called on me yesterday. He, he seemed a little upset. Well, well, if I had to chase kids for a living... I couldn't sleep nights either. Carol, I'm sure your father wants you to have an education. What did it ever do for him? Sure, he worked his way through college. So what? So he could coach football here at, at, at bankrupt you? I was hoping he'd help us change all that. In six months? It takes four years to get a decent schedule. Four years? It's a big club to book you at all. Gee, I thought everybody knew that. Well, now you see. If you don't go to school, you might grow up to be as ignorant as I am. Look, Father, the way I see it, all you have to do is learn how to add. So you can figure out when people are cheating you. I add pretty good. You know something? I've spent 60 years of my life in schools, and I can't add at all. (laughs) Now, if you'll excuse me, I just remembered I have a very important engagement. That's okay, Father. See you in church. I'm very sorry, Father Burke, but the Cardinal is visiting New York for such a short time. You really should have had an appointment. Yes, I know, I, I, I know, but uh, matters come up suddenly, and I thought what perhaps about those reservations can... for Chicago. Oh, uh, yes, Your Eminence, everything has. Father been... Burke. Well, why didn't you tell me he was out? Well, I. Uh... Oh, we didn't want to disturb you, Your Eminence. <laughs> You're in New York so seldom. Now, why all the formality, Father? This doesn't sound like the man who failed me in English history. I was merely adopting the reverential tone customary with your high office. And if you had any real dignity, you'd expect it. Now, that's the Father Beck I used to know. How can I help you, Father? I have an idea of how we could enable St. Anthony's College to continue your eminence. Father Beck, I feel just as badly as you do about the passing of St. Anthony's. But that's entirely in the provincial's hands. I can't interfere. Yes, but if we could make St. Anthony's pay its own way. In that case, it'll be a pleasure to help the provincial see the light. What is your Machiavellian plan? Well, my staff looks upon it as another indication of my senility. Are you familiar with the game of football? That brutal sport? Well, many universities aid themselves financially by engaging in it. Indeed. I'd hope to do the same. But do you know it takes four years to get a decent schedule if the big clubs will book you at all? Well, how can I be of assistance? Well, I thought perhaps you might drop a gentle hint to some of our larger institutions to look favorably upon the plight of St. Anthony. To have them book you? Oh, well, I, I, I really shouldn't have asked. Well, I'll do anything I can for you. I'll see how much influence I really have. Uh, excuse me, Your Eminence, but we'll be late for the uh, appointment. 
Oh, well, I, I'll leave you now. Then. Oh, no, Father. You're going along as our guest. Where are we going? Yankee Stadium. The Yankees are playing Cleveland. Ought to be a splendid game, Father. Well, uh, naturally, it's a crucial. Well, by the time the commencement exercises were held, Father Burke was able to announce the fall football schedule. And now I am sure you will all be interested in a recent communication from His Eminence the Cardinal. He has written the following. My dear Father Burke, concerning my recent appointment as graduate manager of athletics for St. Anthony's College, I am happy to report the following schedule for next fall. September 20th, Santa Carla University. September 27th, Holy Cross. October 4th, Villanova. October 7th, at South Bend, the University of Notre Dame. Father Malone. Mr. Williams, what is it? Are, are you ill? Couldn't he have booked one Protestant school just for a breather? <laughs> Reconsider. Yes, I thank you. told you I'm leaving town. I won't be a party to this homicide. Why, with the material you have here at St. Anthony's, you couldn't whip Vassar at Tiddlywinks. You flipped your lids. Sure, you have a schedule, but how about the players? Players? Right now, we've got 15 boys playing football who ought to be practicing their ping pong. We need a squad of at least 40. They've got to be big, they've got to be strong, and they've got to have experience. Well, now, isn't that up to you, Mr. Williams? I've told you, we're giving you an absolutely free hand. Then you'd better shake it right now, because I'm leaving. It's nice to have known you, gentlemen. So we're leaving, Pop. Oh, where are we going, Pop? As far as our bankroll will take us. Upstate, where we can hide away from our little friend from the probation bureau. Do we know anybody up there? Oh, I've got a friend in Rochester. He owns a bar and grill. Pool room attached? Sure. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. You know, St. Anthony's got a schedule now that any school would be proud of. Including the Matawan home for the aged. But you have all summer to get ready. Three months to build up that kind of a team? We'd be slaughtered. The sports writers would like it, though. They could put me in the funny papers right next to little Abner. He could do it, though. He just could do it. You're beginning to sound like a member of the order. Pop, please. Honey, be sensible. You know football. How could I possibly... You're pretty happy here, huh? Uh-huh. You want to stay here? Uh-huh. Okay, Junior, if that's the way you want it, okay. Oh, gee, Pop, thanks. A couple of days later, Steve Williams was in the athletics office of a very large university up in New England. He went there to talk to two old friends. I'd like to help you out, Steve, but... I got a great setup here. Backfield coach. And I got a four-year deal to coach your line. Okay, fellas. I just thought I'd sound you out. I wouldn't want to take you away from your soft touch here. Uh, are these your files, Moose? Yeah. We got a report in these files, and every prep and high school kid has kicked the ball over ten yards. And the name of the kid who caught it. I wonder how many of these kids I could nail down. Huh. They've already been nailed, a good one. Well, they'll get loose when they hear my offer. What'll that be? Room and board? There's going to be no employer-employee relationships at St. Anthony's. Everybody's going into business for himself. Yeah? What's the deal? Well, at my new alma mater, they don't even know what time it is. Mm -hmm. All they're after are gate receipts. So? So we're going to cut up all the angles for ourselves. Parking, programs, hot dogs, advertising, tenants, and the, the pay washrooms. Mm. Everybody's going to be a member of the firm and split the profits. This will be the first cooperative football team in history. Ain't that socialism? Not if we can get in on it. I thought you were so happy here. Look, 
Just for once, we'd like to make as much as the play. <laughs> well, let's get to work and clean out those files. Oh, Steve, no, we can't swipe those files. This is the Ivy League. Please, I live upstairs from a church. Just hand me the box to dump them in. All right, Moose. Now, what about this one? He sure looks good in this photograph. We got him, Steve. I sent him up yesterday. All state tackle, it says. Well, of course, he didn't graduate. Then we'll print him a diploma. <laughs> well, looks like we got everything but a passer. What happened to that kid from Scranton? Uh, one of the California schools got him first. Yeah, I think they made his old man vice president of the bank. Yeah. There's a good passer in the Canadian League. No? Oh, now take it easy, Steve. He's a pro. Give him a crew haircut and sign him. Jack. Now, remember, we can't just win our first game. We're going to have to roll up a big score or we don't draw flies. How do you roll up a big score against Santa Carla, number one on the West Coast? Summer school. Summer school? Our own brand. Eight classes a day, all football. Santa Carla, Notre Dame, and Holy Cross can't practice in the summertime. Conference rules. That gives us a three-month jump on them. Yeah. By September, we ought to be able to take on the Chicago Bears, even if they use real bears. We may fade in the stretch, gentlemen, but brother, we'll thump them in those openers. Well, what happens if our boys don't want to give up their summers for training? Oh, they'll train, all right. We're getting them only because they want to make some money. Big money. We don't have a squad of college boys. We've got a squad of stockholders. Hail to alma mater. Hail, all hail to thee. <laughs> By the following September, the moss-covered walls of St. Anthony's College was hiding one of the biggest, toughest football teams in the country, and potentially the best paid. But so far, no one seemed to know the difference. Then a week before the opening game, Steve received a letter from the city of New York. It brought him quickly downtown to see me. How come you suggested this place? This, Miss Singleton, happens to be a saloon. Well, I thought we could talk more comfortably in a place better suited to your manners. I drink your highball and quiet your nerves. You know, you're actually showing signs of being human. Now, look, I know we're going to have to fight you when the custody hearing comes up in court, but what is this all about, this, this letter you, you people sent me? Well, it means you have to let Carol see her mother on September 20th, or else you're in contempt of court. That's next Saturday. Mm, Mrs. McCormick insisted. She said it was the most convenient time. I'm glad she still reads the sports pages. That's the day of our first big game. Oh, Mr. Williams, aren't there more important things in Carol's life than football? Not next Saturday, there aren't. Oh, this is just peachy, isn't it? If I make Carol go see her mother, then I'm a heel. If I don't, I'm in contempt of court. It's the old squeeze play. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Oh, what other way is there? Well, it's just possible that Carol will find a whole new world that you've kept her from. How do you know that your way of raising your daughter has been right? Because I asked her. That's the best way, isn't it? How many pink dresses does she have? How many hats she can't play baseball in? And what happens when she stops being a little girl and becomes a young lady? Are you preparing her to meet those problems? I'll call for Carol at 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Listen, Carol, you're not going to the game. What are you talking about? You have to go see your mother today. Alice is coming by to pick you up. Alice? Uh, Miss Singleton. You're kidding, huh? They have a court order. Even you can't fight City Hall. But today, the first game, how could you let them do a thing like that? A lot of things more important in your life than football. You didn't even put up a fight? Now, quit yapping and take a gander at this. I got something for you. What? A time bomb. What else? Well, how do you like it? I think that's huh? I like it fine. Only I want to go to the game. Pop, please, I want to go to the game. Put on the dress, honey. 
She'll be waiting for you downstairs. Now stay out of trouble and kick on the third down, okay? Okay. But I still think you're a stinker. So I took Carol to her mother. I decided to wait around. By two o'clock, Carol had all she could take. As a matter of fact, so had I. We reached the polo grounds in plenty of time for the kickoff. And there, right on the 50-yard line, was Father Bird. Here you are, Father Bird. This robe should keep you nice and warm. Thank you for tucking me in. Next thing I know, you'll be burping me. Well, look who's coming, Father. Brother Procurator and Father Provincial. Good afternoon, Ed. Good afternoon, Father. Oh, I see you got the tickets I sent you. Oh, yes, they're splendid, Chief. And only $4.80 apiece. Well, you said the college had to pay its own way. Or did you hope for professional courtesy? I understand the crowds continue only as long as the team is winning. Well... All our boys went to mass this morning. So did Santa Carla. Ah, yes. But ours outweigh them. <laughs> oh, excuse me, brother. It appears the game started. Oh, who, who has the ball? The the enemy. Smite them, boys. Smite them hip and thigh. Oh, they smited them all right. By the time the fourth quarter started, St. Anthony was leading 20 to we're smiling and we're murdering them. Yes, dear. Quite a team your father has. Quite a team. But didn't you tell me they were all freshmen? Well, in a way. Let's just say they're working their way through college. Oh, I bet there isn't a coal miner left in Pennsylvania. Hey, Pinky, how's business? Ah, oh, great, kid, great. They're eating them like they didn't know what was in them. Uh, friend of yours? Yeah. He's selling hot dogs. Like Steve said, every three counts. You see that? The jockey's made a first down. Hey, how can you not care? Well, you think I should? I'm not being paid, you know. Oh. Well, how do you expect Steve to win games? Is Father Burke a quarterback? Is winning so important, Ken? Hey, whose side do you want, Alice? Am side or pop side? I'm on your side. Thanks. Thanks. St. Anthony's won the game, 28 to nothing. After the game, Carol took me down to the field. Hi, Junior. How'd you get out? Who sprung you? Well, it's very decent of you. Not at all. I've learned a great deal today. First about Carol's mother, and then about you. I always figured you had possibilities. When can I see you again? Wednesday morning, in court. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye, Alice, and thanks. I don't like the way she said that. Me neither. Sorry, Pop, but I guess I spilled some beans. Down. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Father Burke. Well, I just got the final count on the profits from Saturday's game. $31,000 in round figures, and they're going to get rounder and rounder. Now, take a look at this. Advanced sales on the Holy Cross game. There isn't going to be any Holy Cross game. We have just canceled the entire schedule. Oh, I see. The day of reckoning has arrived early, huh, Father? It won't be the last you'll experience either. You mind telling me who opened your eyes? I mind indeed. It's okay. I I think I know. What made you think you could save St. Anthony's by destroying the very things it stands for? I have already asked the provincial to close our school immediately. I'm sorry, Father. The thing that hurt most was to hear from a stranger that you've been buying players, forging records, Dividing profits and laughing at those of us who were naive enough to have confidence in you. That you've even allowed a professional football player to wear the venerable colors of St. Anthony's. Elmer Miller of the Canadian Professional League. Elmer Miller happens to be a kid who spent his last high school year in Korea. Combat medals from here to here. 
comes home and plays one chintzy backwoods game. And what's the difference whether the kids make money on the hot dogs in the parking or some alumnus gets the concession? I've been through this so many times, Father. It's like old home week. So let's just call it quits. I want you to know this, though. I'm not ashamed of anything I've done. There's enough shame in me for both of us. Good day, Mr. Williams. Why, Mr. Williams, this office is officially closed for the night. Well, what do you want? Miss Singleton, you've accomplished the following. Carol will be taken away from me. Father Burke's heart will be broken because St. Anthony's will be closed. And you've cheated some 40 kids out of an education they can't afford unless they're football. All because I looked at your legs. You've been drinking. And in the best Christian tradition, I'm going to return good for evil. Here's some advice. Singleton, start winking at strange men. Drop your gloves any time you're in an elevator with an eligible bachelor. Go boat riding with lonesome sailors. Go out on the town. Let life rub up against you, and then maybe some man will do this to you. Don't you dare kiss me. That's what you wanted, isn't it? But to make up for it, you, you do clever little things like running to Father Burke and telling him my boy sullied the good name of his school. I did not go to Father Burke. No? No. He had me all figured out from the beginning, hasn't he? Four years of finishing school. I went to City College night. And I don't have to tell stories about you to hurt you, Mr. Williams. You're hurting yourself. Anything I've done was to protect Carol. Protect her? From what? From growing up like me. I had a wonderful father, too. Real pals we were, man to man about everything. I hardly ever realized I was a girl. By the time I was ten, I was a mystic. And when I was 12, I hated every boy who'd ever laughed at me. It was a big club. You know that this is the first time I have ever let a man get close to me in all of my life. Now get out of here. Yes, sir? Is Mrs. McCormick in? Is she expecting you, sir? I paid two bucks for an invitation 12 years ago. What are you doing here? I surrender, dear. Get out. Everybody tells me to get out. Not until I've talked to you. Well, be quick about it. We have guests inside. I'm giving Carol up. Congratulations. How touching. Well, maybe it's best for her. I see no sense in dragging her through a court trial tomorrow. I'll send her away to a good school somewhere. And you expect me to agree to that? Well, why not? You don't want her. You were tired of her before she was two months old. You're only giving her up because you know your lips. I want you to bring Carol into court. I want her to hear all about her fine, upstanding father. Have you seen the probation report? Yes, Miss. It would have been nicer to see her, Miss Singleton. Oh, relax, Harold. I can handle this character. Incidentally, see, now that I've told Father Burke the facts of life about football, your brand in particular... You couldn't get custody of a cocker fan. <laughs> Don't take all the credit, darling. I dialed the number, didn't I? Oh, you did, huh? You know, Williams, I'm not overly fond of having your daughter in my house, and I hope you realize what a sacrifice I'm making. I see no reason why Carol should grow up to be the same kind of tramp that you are. <laughs> oh! Just add that to the other charges, Annie. I'll see you in court. <laughs> Now, just one moment, Mr. Williams. As judge of this court, I'll conduct the proceedings exactly as I see fit. All I was trying to do, Your Honor, was... You to heard see... the judge shut up. Uh, uh, yes, sir? Perhaps you'd better wait in my chamber. We don't like a child to see how foolish adults can be. Well, it isn't exactly a secret, Your Honor. I might as well stay. Oh, well, then very well. Counsel for Mrs. McCormick will continue. Then. <clears throat> yes. I should like to read the concluding paragraph of the probation officer's report. It is my opinion that the father has a degrading influence upon the child and that the only course left to the court is to deliver her into the custody of her mother. 
Now, Your Honor, in view of this report, we feel Your Honor, that... What now, Mr. Williams? Before this railroad station closes, may I question the author of this report? That's your privilege, if you insist. I do. Miss Singleton, will you tell this court if you ever saw me hit my daughter? No, of course not. Or deprive her of food, clothing, and schooling? No. Anytime you've seen us together, did she seem unhappy? No. Do you think it's a crime for a father to treat his daughter as an equal? Well, there are some authorities who say it's not a very Does wise. she show signs of vitamin deficiency? Your Honor, am I allowed to get a word in? Oh, I lost control of this hearing an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. May I tell you that I came to this courtroom mainly to repudiate that report. Your Honor, that report was filed under oath. I believed it when I wrote it. When was that? Friday. And I could have been trying a murder case this week. Stay with it, Mr. Crummett. You may be. <laughs> Miss Singleton, am I to understand you're denying your sworn word? Your Honor... I've only just begun to realize how deeply Mr. Williams cares for his daughter. It's obvious to me now that I've, I've spent most of my time investigating the wrong party. I deliberately looked the other way while I allowed Mrs. McCormick to use me for her own purposes. It's finally clear to me that she has no real affection for her own child. That her only purpose was to hurt Mr. Williams. Miss Singleton, are you in love with Mr. Williams? Your Honor, is that relevant? I claim it's the only question now that is relevant. Well, Miss Singleton? Remind the witness she's under oath. You keep quiet! <laughs> Answer the question, please. Well, I can't be sure. I... I believe the answer is yes. That is all, Miss Singleton. May I say something else? Is there anything else to say? Yes. Yes, there is, Your Honor. No matter what my feelings are about Mr. Williams, he is still no fit father for a little girl. Sometimes love isn't enough. Believe me, it, it would be a tragic mistake to leave Carol in his soul custody. I am halting these proceedings right now until further notice. I shall assign another probation officer, a man. And until his report's completed, Carol shall remain a ward of the juvenile court. Miss Singleton... You will pick up the child tomorrow at her dwelling and deliver her to the children's center. This court finally is adjourned. Yes, I'm all packed off. Will I be happy to blow this place? I hope we can sleep without those bells clanging over us. Well... I can always bang my head against the wall. Look, Junior, everything's going to turn out all right. It's eight to five we'll be back together again. Why don't we just duck out? How far is it to Rochester? My friend with a bar and grill? Why not? I don't want him to take me away from you. You can't run away from life, honey. It always catches up with you. Get him. We're leaving here just in time. Living in a church is ruining you. Now, come on. Alice is probably waiting for you. Or is it the church? What's that? Nothing. Please. Don't you want me? There's nothing I want more. In spite of anything I can do or you can do, you're getting bigger every day. And it's just a matter of time until your old man is the least important guy in your life. What's that got to do with it? Well, you just got to quit looking at me like I was George Washington, Red Grange, and Florence Nightingale all rolled into one. I don't know all the answers, kid. Maybe the judge has a better one. Okay, Coach. After all, you didn't make the world. Yes, I was waiting for Carol just outside the chapel. And then suddenly the chapel started to fill up. Students and faculty. Everybody in school was walking in. And then Father Burke started to talk to me. Called to chapel on short notice to give thanks for some extremely good news. St. Anthony's will continue in its bungling ways down through the years. The province has been kind enough to continue its financial aid. 
The most difficult thing for a man to admit is that he's growing old. It is an especially difficult thing for an old man to admit it. I now realize that during these past years, I was not trying to save St. Anthony. I was trying to perpetuate myself in a job that had become too much for me. In my naive attempt to turn this stubborn old school into a money-making operation, I asked Steve Williams to perform an impossible task. And he did it. He did it in his own way. And because he did what I asked him to do, I discharged him from his post, exposed him to public ridicule, and took from him the one thing in life that he valued. I hope that someday he will find it in his heart to forgive me. As for our football team, it will go back to its old ways and its old schedule. And now, before I hurt anyone else, and more especially before I hurt St. Anthony's further, the wisest course for me is to step down. Like our old chapel clock, I have grown picturesque, but not very useful. So goodbye, and God bless you all. Well, officer, I'm delivering the package again. That's me. Hello, Carol. Hi, Alice. We were listening to Father Burke. You've got yourself a pretty good character witness, Steve. Oh, with my record, I'll need the whole school in court. Uh, I hope that someday you'll find a good mother for Carol. That's all either of you need. I know. Well, I guess we might as well shove off. See you soon, Pop. Yeah. Uh, you too? I wouldn't be at all surprised. And you still have nice legs for a copper. Mr. Williams, there is a time and a place for remarks like that. Yeah, you're right, Father. Well, welcome to the ranks of the unemployed. I know. Only one of us. You'll be back here again next season. Me? Read the fine print in your contract. It very clearly says that if desired by the college, this agreement may be extended for 12 months. I never saw that. It's in Latin. <laughs> now... <laughs> What about that game of Kelly Pool? <laughs> Come on. Only I've got a terrible feeling I'm going to lose my shirt. Here they are, with all their problems solved. Van Johnson and Joanne Drew. Not quite. There's still the problem of what to wear to the Academy Awards tomorrow night. As tonight, we're Polly Bear. Father Black, Jess White as Father Malone, Hans Conrad as Father Provincial, Francis Robinson as Anne, Joseph Kearns as Procurator... Joe Stratton, Howard McNair, Art Jacobson, Edgar Barrier, Jack Cushion, William Conrad, Tudor Marson, Tom Brown, and Eddie Marr.